Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our EMIS live event to um, look at the GP CPCS solution that we're currently rolling out across England. Um, we're just going to give people a few moments to join the session, so we'll start at uh, 12.31. OK, my clock's gone to 12.31 and as if by magic, all the attendee numbers uh, went up slightly. So uh, very warm welcome to this afternoon's session. Um, good afternoon to you all. My name is Kevin Noble. Um, I'm currently the Director of Professional Services at Pinnacle. We're uh, responsible for the Farm Outcomes platform and we became part of the EMIS group in March 2020. And today's session is to take you through um, our integrated solution to manage GP referrals to community pharmacy. Um, I still work as a pharmacist, so I see this from both ends. Um, occasionally on a Saturday, I, I well, every other Saturday, I locum in a, in a pharmacy on the Isle of Wight. Uh, we haven't yet got a solution like this in place where I practice, but we're currently live in many areas across England, and um, this session is to give you an idea of how this solution works. So I'd like to start by considering why this is important. And for the session today, we've just got a few slides to start with, and then we're going to go into a, a live demonstration of the solution to show you what happens at the GP practice end and how that referral is picked up at the pharmacy end and look at the various messages that get sent um, to GP practice and on to organisations like the NHS BSA. But the reason why this is important is um, referrals to community pharmacies will save capacity at GP practice and make better use of an underutilised resource in the community. So um, Ed Waller um, made the statement in 2019 at the National Pharmacy Association conference that uh, we estimate 20.4 million GP appointments could be transferred to community pharmacy. And what we'll do over the next few minutes is look at the reasons why and some of the challenges that uh, are in place at the GP practice end um, to manage uh, requests that, that come into their surgeries for, for patients. So these are got a couple of pages of some of the challenges that GPs are currently facing. And of course, we've got a rising um, and sustainable patient demand for healthcare from GP practices, and that's been exacerbated further by the COVID-19 restrictions that have been put in place um, with many patients looking to see GPs and being unable to get appointments. Um, GP colleagues also receive frequent requests for medicines that we all know can be purchased at a community pharmacy without the need for a prescription and without uh, without issue in prescriptions. And we all recognise that community pharmacists are massively underused being the expert in medicines and unable to provide care for patients um, in a very uh, efficient manner. Um, the other challenges for GP practices is that receptionists are often being asked to act as clinical care navigators. So in some practices, receptionists will be filtering calls where patients are requesting GP appointments and asking for reasons why the patient may want to see the GP and um, what we've done with this solution to address some of the challenges that these receptionists have is introduce a, a clinical triage that I'll talk about a little bit more in a moment. So this will help receptionists identify patients that are suitable for a referral to a pharmacy and recognise patients that need to see the GP so can efficiently filter those patients out. Um, and that covers off the second bullet point here. So how can we address the clinical risk that um, may arise from inappropriate direction of patients to a pharmacy when they really need to see the GP. So this solution um, will address uh, that issue as well. Um, what we need as well is an efficient, robust referral mechanism that addresses all of all of the above um, so that patients can be directed appropriately to pharmacy. So if you're doing this um, and making a best guess, it often will result in an inappropriate direction of a patient uh, to a pharmacy. And that, of course, will result in that patient being referred back to the GP if the pharmacy can't help them. So we all have scratched our heads to come up with a solution that will address all of these problems because the result of such inappropriate 
uh, referrals to pharmacy just creates additional workload for everybody and a poor patient experience. So uh, the service will quickly develop a, a bad reputation. So I put this slide together yesterday thinking what makes a, a solution a successful solution and through discussion with colleagues working at GP practice and, and, and at the pharmacy end, uh, any solution must be easy to use. Uh, you should be able to get meaningful audit data out of the solution. Um, solutions that are best are those that can send an ITK referral to a pharmacy. That means the message sent can present in uh, in a workflow at the pharmacy, such as the service page of Farm Outcomes, and you'll see how that works in a moment. This avoids the need to continually look in shared email inboxes and uh, search out messages that have come asking you to contact patients and initiate some care. Um, we need to effectively join the patient up to the pharmacy, so we have a, a, a variety of mechanisms that uh, alert the patient to the fact uh, that they've accepted a referral to the pharmacy and tells them which pharmacy they've been referred to. And those are uh, messages that get sent to the patient as both uh, email uh, through the patient access solution and as an SMS that's an optional uh, add on for um, people that are looking at the system to to use. Um, we need an effective triage tool to address the challenges that receptionists face with uh, filtering patients appropriately and only making appropriate referrals to community pharmacies. And ideally, we want any referral tool or mechanism to be part of the GP clinical system, so to be embedded within the GP clinical system, so it's easy to move uh, into the referral solution and also for information transfer to take place. And we need to have a a robust referral solution that can provide uh, a solution to send a referral to any community pharmacy as opposed to only a few. So let's have a look um, and see what the Patient Access Connect solution offers. So the features of this solution that you'll see in action in a moment are it can be accessed directly from the EMIS web system from a variety of pages, including the, the home page and the, uh, consult, the patient consultation page. Uh, the patient data can pre-populate across into the referral template, so that saves um, time with uh, avoiding the need to re-key information. Um, there's a, a two minute triage, which we'll go through and cover off uh, in a moment to show you how that works, that will pick up red flags for patients and help care navigators to identify patients that are suitable for referral versus those that are not suitable referral for referral. And that triage tool has been developed by Dr. Sarah Jarvis at EMIS and has been peer reviewed by uh, a GP panel, so we're confident that it reflects uh, the best current guidance. And that uh, referral um, triage mechanism also will identify red and amber. You highlight patients that need to see a GP, either for an urgent or a non urgent appointment. Um, and for those patients, of course, at the end of that triage process that are appropriate to refer on to a community pharmacy, we've introduced the ability for for that to happen and to happen directly into the workflow of farm outcomes into the service page. Um, the other features of the patient access connect solution is there's a choice of pharmacy, obviously, so the patient can identify pharmacies they want the referral sent to. Um, the referral will be sent directly into the workflow, as I've just said, and uh, uh, an email will be sent to the patient to give them information on the uh, pharmacy they've been referred to. Uh, and there's the option to also add on an SMS message to go to a patient's mobile phone again to pass on information about the referral, where the referral has been sent to, etc. Um, the pharmacist will receive all details of the, the patient and the reason for referral into their workflow. And um, there's the safety net, of course, with referrals to pharmacy as detailed in the current service specification, that if the patient doesn't make contact, then the pharmacist will make an attempt to contact the patient within 12 hours of uh, receiving a referral for GP CPCS. Um, the outcomes of the pharmacist consultation are fed back to the GP. Currently, the route for minor ailments is still via NHS mail. However, the, the work has already started to move this across to become a MESH notification. So MESH uh, in this world of acronyms we live in is the message exchange for social care and health. Um, the urgent supply part of the CPCS service already 
uh, notifies back to the GP via MASH. It's a much better uh, mechanism for sending post event information back to GP practice because the information will appear as a structured coded message in the GP workflow uh, in, and in many instances is auto filed to the patient record. So currently the outcome for minor ailments is still via NHS mail, but as I say, work has started to um, transfer that across to MASH and uh, that work is necessary to be completed before that uh, will actually happen. So there are various moving parts there. We're working with NHS Digital to uh, um, format a, the specification to, to, to make this change. So as soon as that's done, uh, the message will go back to GPs via MASH. So this is the point in all these demonstrations where things go wrong. So live demos, who would put themselves in that situation? So what I'll do, I've got Matt Finity with me, who's um, from Patient uh, Access, and Matt's going to share his screen now and we'll show you what happens at the GP practice end and how these referrals get sent across to community pharmacies. And we'll chat through the, the triage and show you how that works. Um, and then how the messages flow into farm outcomes and what uh, is in place at the pharmacy end for recording the referral follow up. So Matt, if I can hand over to you, if you can grab the screen and then we'll do a joint uh, presentation of the, the GP flow. Yep, sure. So I'm Matt Finity. I'm engineering lead for Patient Access Connect, past, present and future. So we'll um, have a demo. OK, so as Kevin was saying, um, there's multiple places that you can launch Patient Access Connect from directly within the EMIS web system. Um, there is that inside the care record. So there's a button within the ribbon across uh, multiple different pages that we can launch from. So in, in this case, a GP or a clinician can directly launch the solution. Um, alternatively, we also have the button available within the appointments module. So for any receptionists or people triaging patients, they would be able to launch it from their own workflow where they probably usually launch the system from. So with just one click, we launch the system and uh, Kevin's going to direct me around here a little bit. Yeah, great. Thanks, Matt. So there are there are a number of options here available to the clinician. You can see some there are three buttons in this field here. So um, we can act, we can actually direct a referral instantly. So if a patient phoned up and they had a query for a GP uh, that they knew they needed to direct to a pharmacy, they can just create a referral by simply clicking the create referral button. And we're going to get to the screen that that takes us to at the end of the triage process anyway, so you'll see what that looks like. But there's there's the ability to simply send a referral if that need arises, or there's the ability to triage the patient using the clinical triage tool. And to do that, the care navigator would simply click on assess for referrals. So opening up that um, page will take you through to the, the a page where the triage begins. So clicking on begin assessment. Uh, the care navigator will see a screen that is there as a filter. So the GPC PCS referrals are cut off at the age of one. So if you were to answer the, the question here that the patient was one, then uh, they would be blocked and a pop up would appear to say um, this patient needs to see the GP. So it is inappropriate for referrals. So going back to the referral page itself, we can see what happens then when you click on no. And this time they're taken through to a series of questions that are designed to a, eliminate kind of life threatening conditions. So this one here is are there signs of a heart attack, a stroke, drowsiness? All of this is to eliminate life threatening situations. And um, we're not going to click on yes, but you'll get a similar alert to say if any of these apply, then obviously the patient is not appropriate for referral on to a community pharmacist. So answering no will take us through to a series of questions that have been recently introduced to filter uh, for COVID symptoms. So again, if you were to answer any of these, yes, appropriate directions appear in the page to say, don't send the patient to the pharmacy and give them the best advice for COVID management. So we're going to answer no to all of these and confirm to continue. And then a series of conditions will appear um, that are aligned with the current service specification. So this has been built with the service spec in mind and um, selection of any of these 
uh, conditions will give the opportunity to ask further questions. So we're going to go for diarrhea and a tummy bug. Um, very common reason for referral into pharmacy when I look at the audit reports, uh, uncomplicated diarrhea. So continuing that will take us through to a series of questions that have been designed to highlight red flags. So for example here, um, if you were to ask these questions and the patient replied, yes, um, my bowel movements are jet black and sticky. Of course, that could be an indication of blood higher up in the gastrointestinal tract. So if we were to select any of these options, um, you would get an alert again to say this patient needs to see the doctor is inappropriate for referral. So all of this has been put together with all of those red flags for these conditions in mind. And um, as I say, has been validated. So we're confident that actually this is is going to filter these patients out. So I don't know whether you want to click on that, Matt, and just show so we can see that G GP immediately, because obviously this could mean that the patients are bleeding um, internally. So we've got to go back to our page now. So this takes us back to the beginning, because in reality, we, that would be the end of the engagement with that patient. So if we quickly go back through and uh, end up at the point where we've once again got diarrhea. And this time we're going to say none of the above. So we've considered all of the red flags and at this point in the process, uh, the patient has the uh, opportunity or the is, is given the option to uh, be referred to their community pharmacist. So um, of course the patient can decline, but uh, if they're um, given a choice of uh, waiting for an appointment for a number of days or, or seeing a, a healthcare professional today, nine times out of 10 our experience is that they will accept the referral. So, Clicking on create referral will take us through to the patient details page. So the, the good thing about this is all of the information is imported from the patient record. So all of that is pre-populated, no need to rekey, and we can enter into our notes field the reason for the referral. Great, thanks Matt. So um, now we're in a position to continue. And this is where the uh, selection of the pharmacy takes place. So we're in a test environment here, but this will automatically default to the patient's home postcode and give a list of pharmacies nearest to that postcode. But if the patient is in work, we can change that postcode and it will list pharmacies near to the patient's place of work. So um, very flexible and the patient will have the choice with regards to which pharmacy they want to be referred to. So if we go back to our pharmacy that we're going to make the referral to because it's pointless sending to one that we're not going to be able to see the other end for. But you can see here that the um, opening hours for that pharmacy are displayed within the system. And we can see here that if this referral was taking place on a Saturday or Sunday, for example, the pharmacy is closed so there wouldn't be any point in making that referral and that information can be passed back to the patient. But we're now sat here on a Wednesday so we can see it's open at the pharmacy from nine till five. So we're going to make that referral and send the referral. And what's happening now is a message is being sent across the uh, the system uh, and it's leaving the um, the GP system and it's been sent to the pharmacy within farm outcomes. So just before we we leave the screen here, uh, in case there are people on the presentation today that are, are looking at this from a GP practice and there's also uh, some various reports that are available from the patient access end and you've got access via a button here to look at referral reports which will detail activity and show you the numbers of referrals that are sent, uh, who the patient was, who, they were, who the referrals were created by and the pharmacies that they were referred to. Um, so that's available uh, as an audit uh, to see the activity that uh, that you might be interested in. So what I'll do now is I'll grab the screen away from Matt and share my screen because um, what we'll do. I've got some directions coming up for me here on my page and just making sure that I'm not going to do anything to break it. And hopefully all being well and good. You'll be able to see my screen now. 
Um, and this is the home page of Farm Outcomes. So there, there are a number of things that happen when that referral gets sent. The patient gets an SMS if that has been um, decided to put in place as an optional add-on. The patient is sent an email from the patient access solution to their um, to their email to say they've accepted a referral and they've been referred to a community pharmacy and gives them details of that pharmacy. The community pharmacy that have received the referral also receive an email that goes to their management email address. So from the home page of Farm Outcomes, for those of you that are, are looking at this from the pharmacy end, from the home page, you can click on update my organization details. And there's an option here to put in a management email. So Matt, your email inbox must be getting filled up with all of the notifications that are going to you for every referral that we send, if this is indeed your real email. Um, but you can put whichever email you like in here. It doesn't have to be a secure email. It can be a non-secure email. Um, and you can put a number of emails in, in this box if you want to at the pharmacy end, just separated by a comma. So what we see in a lot of instances is each of the pharmacists that work at a pharmacy put a preference in for themselves, separated by a comma. It doesn't have to be secure because there is never any patient information that gets transferred in this email. It just simply says you've received a referral from this GP practice. Please log into Farm Outcomes to pick up this referral. Um, so the referral itself will present in the services screen. So I'm going to go through to the services screen now and you can see here we've got a few GP CPCS referrals that have come in. Um, and this is the one that, that Matt has just sent. So for the pharmacist to access the information, all they need to do is click on that referral and clicking on the referral will open up the um, a table which shows the name of the, the referring GP practice, the details of the patient, the date of birth of the patient, the age of the patient, the gender of the patient, and then the, the, the reason for the referral is detailed at the bottom of the table here, so the patient has um, diarrhea. So what we can do now at the pharmacy end is you have a number of options here that are embedded into this table. If the patient never turns up at your pharmacy or you manage to contact the patient and they say, Do you know, all of a sudden this resolved and I no longer come to see you, need, need to come to see you, you can click on close here and this will just uh, make the referral disappear from your services page and the, the care is, is, is closed off. That information is available to the GP practice because we also provide GP colleagues with the ability to log in to um, outcomes for Health or Farm Outcomes and look at an activity report which they can view, which gives them real time information on referral statuses so they can see those that have been completed, accepted or closed. Um, if the patient arrives at your pharmacy, which we all hope they do, um, you click on complete now and this will take you through to a template where you record your follow up. So this is closely aligned to the follow up for NHS 111 minor illness referrals. So the first piece of functionality I just want to draw your attention to uh, won't work sadly for us in this instance because the, the patient details that have been sent through uh, are not are not for real patients uh, because they're um, a test patient here. So none of this is patient identifiable information. But if that had been a real patient, then what happens here is you have the option to uh, look or go quickly to that patient's summary care record if you wanted to look at uh, any prescribing history or medicines history or, or anything that might help you with this consultation. And you access that from a hang tab that's made available to you in the service template here on the right hand side. So at the moment it's greyed out, it's this summary care record hang tab here. But if this patient is validated against the personal demographic service, which for real patients you'd have a button here to say, this patient's been validated, click to confirm, uh, and then this hang tab goes orange and you will be able to click on this hang tab and be taken through to the consent page for that patient's summary care record. Be aware that you do need to have a smart card in a smart card reader to make use of this functionality. So um, you need to have a valid smart card in a smart card reader attached to the computer you're working on and uh, and have the right role based access code on that smart card. So if you want to know what that role based access code is, I can tell you it's B0257. Um, and if you see a registration agent and you've um, satisfied the necessary criteria, they can add that role based access code to your smart card so you can use this functionality. It appears in quite a few of our templates these days, so useful to have. Um, the next question is consultation type, telephone or face to face. We're starting to see more people face to face. 
these days, or I, I certainly do when I have my, my days in practice, which I thoroughly enjoy. Um, and one of, if you are seeing somebody face to face, then uh, if they're accompanied, they may be a, a, a child. If they're accompanied, we need to capture who the person is that's with that patient and just make sure that the patient's happy for them to be um, in the consultation. Um, there's then a, a short uh, triage just to uh, make sure that the patient that's there doesn't have any underlying conditions that would cause you concern with any treatments that you may decide to supply as an outcome for this consultation. So there's a, a conversation around existing medical conditions, allergies and sensitivities. And if any of these apply, you'll just see a little red flag come up to say this isn't going to stop you providing care, but just take care when you're um, deciding on current on treatments to support the patient that uh, the licensing allows for that. So nine times out of ten, and this is the advantage of a, a triage at the GP end, is it's ho hopefully going to filter inappropriate patients out. So we certainly have seen where this triage is being used that the number of inappropriate referrals is is far less than um, it would be if, if something like that wasn't available. So um, if the answer here is currently no medical conditions or relevant history are, are there to be considered, then um, nothing pops up with regards to red flags. So the next uh, field is a drop down field where you can uh, ident identify the reason for referral. So in our case here, our referral reason was diarrhea. Um, and you'll see a little red flag checker box pop up with a link through to nice clinical knowledge summaries and clicking on that will take you through to the CKS page where you can access uh, more information um, on diarrhea here, adult assessment or antibiotic assessment, quite a few pages there, but these are really useful information resources for uh, looking at red flags to um, be careful of and provide information um, on the condition itself. So one of the service requirements is that we check CKS and there's a little question here to confirm that um, you have done that. It might be that you've got good reason that you don't you don't need to if you know the patient really well, but it's always advisable to have a quick look at that. Um, if red flags are present, again, unlikely with the clinical triage that we got in place, but um, and you and you say yes, this does apply, then some information will appear to identify the correct referral pathway for you, depending on whether you're in hours or out of hours. Uh, but hopefully this is the answer to this will be no nine times out of ten. And then there's a few questions here about symptom check. So how long has the patient had their symptoms? Um, less than 24 hours. What are they taken to date? If anything, if they have, then you've got opportunity to detail that because this is a clinical record that will be retained in line with NHS um, data retention guidelines and stored for you uh, to refer back to and, and be available for you to be re to, to refer back to if you need to. If you answer this question, no, obviously these fields don't uh, don't appear. So there's one here about remedies tried to date and other symptoms. You're then at the, the outcome stage of this service. So um, are you going to give the patient simply advice or advice on appropriate sale of medicines, appropriate advice and referral to a minor ailment service? So if you've got a locally commissioned minor ailment service that will allow you to provide medications under that service, you can use that those service arrangements to supply these medicines. Um, but it's more often the case that the patient will and be purchasing medicines. There's a little note here to remind you that the arrangements for CPCS don't currently include reimbursement for costs of medicine supply, so you need to pass those costs on to the patient, but there is your um, professional service payment um, in line with the current item of service payment that is made for this service. Um, there's now the opportunity to enter in details of medicine supplied if you've made it, if you've uh, identified or, or selected the outcome that you are going to provide a medicine, you can list the medicines that you've supplied here. So these fields are linked through to the dictionary of medicines and devices. So if you start to type in the treatment that you want to to give, you can select those um, that medicine and um, put the quantity in and there's a, a field here to allow you to record the dose. Again, these fields are all there because this is all part of the required data set. So the reason why you get asked to complete this is because the specification or the, the standards that have been set require you to record it if you are offering this service. So two to be taken to start. Then. Um, 
if you're supplying a second medicine, if you were going to give some diorolite sachets, for example, you could um, list that in this field here. But if you're not, then those fields remain hidden. And then you're at the end of the consultation and providing advice to the patient. So this is just there as an aid memoir list, really. So again, this is the advice that the service specification requires you to pass on to the patient. So at this point here, what I do in my own practice is I use this as an aid memoir list and tick this how I go. So I'd, I'd just be advising plenty of fluid intake and how to take and then how to take the medicines to take two to start and one after each loose stool. Um, and then advice to uh, to the patient to um, make them aware of what they should do if their symptoms get worse. Um, if the patient's been signposted to an electronic information resource, tick this box here if you've um, directed them at something like patient.co.uk. Um, for advice or if you've supplied printed leaflets just record here. There's some embedded hyperlinks here where you can click to go to online information resources and, and access leaflets if you wanted to do that and then advice on managing managing future minor illness. So you might want to um, highlight to the patient the conditions that you can provide support with um, moving forward. Um, there's a little notes field here that's a non-mandatory field that allows you to record additional instructions that you've given to the patient. Um, and here is, is an option just to say is it the patient that we've advised or a patient's representative if you were speaking to somebody over the phone or um, if it was somebody attending on behalf of the patient. And then this tick box here is there just to confirm that the consultation has been closed with the advice to the patient uh, that they should um, come back and uh, and see you at the pharmacy or make an appointment to see their GP or call 111 if their symptoms don't improve or, or become worse. So ticking that box there is the end of the consultation part of this, but there are some remaining fields here. Um, I think in reality this button here is default to no, so you don't have to do anything apart from save the record at this stage unless you wanted to report an incident. So incidents as far as CPCS are concerned are kind of um, messages around uh, patients that might have been referred to you that aren't suitable for the service and there were concerns or uh, any incident that you think you, you need to record here. What happens with these messages is they populate a notification that go back to the commissioners of the service at the moment. So they're keen to analyse um, outcomes of incidents that, that might arise as part of the service. But as I say, with the triage in place, um, it's highly unlikely that you're going to get that happening. Um, for patients that are sent via this route. So uh, if the answer to that is no, then that field remains hidden. But you have opportunity here to record some notes. So in some areas, referrals are made where the GPs are aware locally that pharmacists have PGDs in place or patient group directions that allow them to supply prescription only medicines for certain conditions. So a good example of that would be um, something like the ability to supply nitrofurantso in a short course of nitrofurantso for uncomplicated urinary tract infection and pharmacists are, are getting uh, referrals through for, for this type of thing in some localities but this is where you would record the details of the medicine supplied if you were supplying medicines under a PGD. Uh, there's a little notes field here to do that and if you want to send us feedback on the service you can use the box at the end of this template that gives you opportunity to um, give us information on how you feel we might be able to improve the service or make it uh, easier to use for the end users. We're always interested in that and look at this feedback um, every quarter to see if there's a recurring theme that we can uh, make life easier for you. So um, obviously this has taken a bit longer because I've been talking a lot about the different fields, but um, at the end of the consultation here, you would simply click on save. And when you click on save, there are various things that happen. Um, there's a message that gets generated that goes back to the patient's GP. So that's the post event message that will inform the GP of the outcome. And as I say, as I said earlier, shortly that will be um, migrating or, or, be, or changing to be sent via the, the mesh mechanism. So that will make life a lot easier at uh, the GP practice end for GP colleagues. Um, but at the moment it goes via NHS mail, so that will send provided the GP has a verified secure email set against their um, practice, which most have now. Um, the other thing that happens here, of course, which is important for the pharmacy end is the uh, fire message. 
uh, gets sent to the NHS BSA and the claim is populated into the Manage Your Service portal. So saving that record will um, do all of those things unless the mandatory fields have been left blank and then you'll be taken back to the fields that are missing and marked as mandatory. Um, so that kind of concludes the, the practical side of this. So I just wanted to finish off by talking about some plans for the future and then we'll have some opportunity to take some questions. So we're already getting some feedback from GP colleagues and, and pharmacy users in some areas um, and requests for um, improvements which we've taken on board and we're acting on currently. So one of the questions we often get asked at the GP end is when I move into the um, referral tool into the patient access connect referral tool um, will the information I record there right back to the patient record? So the answer to that is currently not. It's it's available there for you to access from within the patient access tool itself um, because you saw the reports that Matt brought up very briefly earlier on. Um, but we are working to uh, have right back to the patient record. So that is on our roadmap and we're hoping that that will be in place uh, either by the end of this year or early next year. Um, the triage information itself. So for any pharmacy users on the call that currently use our system, you'll be aware that if you receive an NHS 111 referral from Pathways for a minor illness consultation, information on the triage uh, is displayed so you can see the questions that the patient has answered at the point of that triage, which is, I always find it useful because you can see things like you're sat down with a patient and um, they've obviously got some strange symptoms and you can see from the triage they've said to the NHS 111 call handler yeah I haven't been on holiday I haven't been abroad and then they drop into the conversation with you when you're thinking how do I help this patient best that uh, they felt like this since they returned from their safari in Kenya and all of a sudden you, you're thinking uh, maybe malaria or something like that might might apply so always useful to see the triage because um, you can see the answers that have been given at the point of um, contact earlier in this care pathway and um, that will also be fed across into the pharmacy information we're hoping again uh, late this year early next year so we're always looking at ways to improve this uh, I've mentioned the post event message going back to the GP practice via mesh as coded information which will make life uh, a lot easier at the GP end when that information goes back because there will be the ability for auto filing with that and that information uh, going into the patient record um, and the, the big ask that we get in most areas is are there plans to introduce a, a patient triage tool? So uh, what this is, is um, the, the triage that we went through. We're working at the moment to um, recreate those questions into a, a patient friendly format that we could um, front on a, on a GP website. Um, so the patient, if they a calling could could go through that triage process themselves and if they answered those questions it would identify them as suitable for a pharmacy referral um, in some instances gps are happy with the governance around that triage tool and they've indicated that they would want the referral to go there and then um, but there will be a variety of settings in this triage tool where gps can either elect to set the referral to send automatically at the end of the triage completion or they can elect to um, always want to see the triage uh, and click send before that actually goes to the community pharmacy. So uh, a few uh, a list there of some exciting developments that we've got planned for this service and we hope to have in place um, later this year or early next year. Um, and we're now at the point where we can take some questions from you and Hopefully people have been putting that into the question and answer session. So let's open some of those up and um, can you confirm it's just, so this is from somebody anonymous, can you confirm it's just those pharmacies that provide CPCS that are listed for selection? Yes it is. So when we set this up there's quite a lot of work to do for us to set this up at our end and at the uh, at the patient end, the team at patient need to create a, a, a list for the GPs locally to use and it will only be pharmacies that have signed up to deliver CPCS that will be included in this um, in this service. So it will only be those that have signed up to provide the service that are selectable for onward referral and I can see Matt's already answered that. So thanks Matt, I need to look more carefully to see that things have been, uh, have been answered. 
Um, so the medication supply, do you mean a sale that the patient pays? So yeah, so the service specification for CPCS allows for medication supply in a number of ways. So it highlights that if you have a locally commissioned minor ailment service, you can provide the medicines for the patient via that minor ailment service. Um, or if there isn't, if there are, are no arrangements like that in place, then the patient needs to um, pay for the medicines that they, they are supplied with. Um, do you have any tips on how to encourage GPs receptionists to use the CPCS service? So that, that's a really good question. Um, I think there needs to be buy in from the GP practice um, to, to want to do this. Uh, we are getting a, a lot of inquiries about this since we launched this as a solution, and there does seem to be um, more and more uh, at this point in time a desire to have a, a robust referral mechanism in place to send referrals to pharmacy, especially um, since we've had uh, the COVID problem around uh, and uh, obviously it avoids the need to, to get people into a practice setting uh, and will help with phone um, phone triages. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know who's asked the question because it, it's anonymous on here, but I know when I had my own pharmacy, I've been a pharmacy contractor in the past. I've had a pharmacy in Lymington in the New Forest and I had one in Freshwater on the Isle of Wight uh, until I um, sold that business uh, and then moved on to work with the NHS for a period of time as a pharmacy advisor. Um, but I know that I used to have regular meetings with my local GP practices as, as part of what I did just to make sure that um, we were all um, batting from the same wicket or uh, sorry about that, it's my phone that I didn't turn off, um, which I will do now. Um, and we it gave us the opportunity to discuss things like this that was uh, available and uh, and we could put the idea into their head that this may be a good idea. So they, that might be a good forum if you're in a position to have those conversations locally. I always used to find local conversation was the best way to to move things forward, but certainly maybe um, ask your LPCs about activity in your area. Uh, we've got certain areas of the country where LPCs have been very active in in having some of these discussions with PCNs and, and GP practices. So um, that may be a good uh, a, a good route into into this for you. Um, so that's all the questions we've got published. Um, if you have any more questions and there's one that's just come in here that. Um, I'll just move him to the published section. So is this only available to EMIS users or can be used with Proscript users in community pharmacy? So the solution is a GP practice solution. So the triage solution is a mechanism to send referrals from GP into pharmacy. If you are a Proscript user, um, you will benefit from the interoperability piece that we've already completed with the Proscript Connect team that if it's not available to you already, is it will be in the near future where you can move seamlessly between Proscript Connect and Farm Outcomes um, by completing a process called OAuth2 um, validation of your credentials. And once done once in a day, that will um, display all your Farm Outcomes services that are available to you in your Proscript Connect screen. And you can move into any of those service templates from that screen. Um, but uh, that availability of that functionality, I suggest if you haven't already got it to discuss with your field team um, and they'll be able to let you know when that's available. So um, this is very much a, a GP referral sending solution rather than um, a proscript uh, solution at this stage. So the referrals will appear in the service page of Farm Outcomes. So hopefully that's all our questions answered. We'll just give a, a bit more time because we got through this a little bit quicker than I thought we would. Um, if anybody's got any more questions, we'll hang on for a minute. If not, then we'll give you 15 minutes of your day back um, to enjoy the sunshine. If you're on the Isle of Wight, the sun's just come out. Um, but uh, OK, I think that's 
can't see anything else that's come in. We will uh, look through the questions and publish answers to all the questions after today's event. So all that remains for me to do is thank you very much for your attendance uh, at this session. Uh, wish you all the best with this service moving forward and enjoy the rest of your day. So we'll bring the session to a to a close. Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much.